Hi everybody, welcome to the live kitchen experience. So good to see such a big crowd of people. You're in for a treat. We have got the Nikkei boys from Chato Mate. And these boys are going to create magic using a fusion of ingredients and styles, notably from Japan and Peru. Thank you very much. As you said, I'm Jordan and this is Michael and together we're known as the Nikkei Boys. The cuisine that we do is Nikkei cuisine, which is the evolution of Peruvian food by Japanese people. So around 130 years ago, the farmers and people from Japan flew to Peru looking for work. During war times, they got cut off from their supplies. So they had to make a cuisine using local ingredients from Peru. And that was actually the evolution of what's called now Nikkei cuisine. Everybody here at the end will taste what we make. Is it anyone's birthday today? Yes, it is someone's birthday. Whose birthday is it? Aha! It's my amazing girlfriend, Alina, in the back. She's coming along today. So happy birthday. Happy we got birthday. her out of the house to come and see this. Yeah. Holding the newborn baby. Yeah. So congratulations. What a, what a fantastic present. <laughs> so what we'll do is we're going to make a chicken dish and a beef dish. The beef dish is called tataki, which is seared on the outside and raw in the middle. We're going to do our Nikkei version of that. Gotcha. So in the, where is the restaurant by the way? So the it's restaurant's in Soho, in Frith Street, London. And you're open all day? Yeah, we're open from 12 noon all the way through to 1am. Uh, and you guys are doing a really good uh, menu deal uh, right now. I think uh, it's a kind of taster, six yeah. taster course. 10, ten items in a bento box, can you believe it? For lunch? £20 for 10 items. It's a tasting of all our best dishes in a bento box for lunch. You can be in and out within 45 minutes, £20. Yeah, yeah. Is, so, it, is it open kitchen, Chef? Actually, the whole zone is kitchens everywhere. So downstairs, you've got a tostadita eater bar, almost like a sashimi pizza, a live DJ, an organic juice bar. Then you go upstairs, and there's a robata, which is a, in Japanese it's a grill it's with tennis racket sort of style racks. So we cook up, and the flames are going crazy. He lost all his hair to that fire when it was broken up. <laughs> and, um, that, and then there's a sushi bar around the corner. You can see it, seven or eight sushi chefs doing uh, raw food and sushi and sashimi. And that's half the menu. Well, it sounds positive. And then the other half is behind the scenes in the kitchen. And if you know us, you come in the kitchen, you say hello, no problem. But we're going to start with marinating the chicken first. Den miso, which is fermented soybean paste. It's a sauce that we make in the restaurant. Okay? And then we're going to blend into it some onion that Mike's cutting. I'll show you how to peel ginger at home. So we're going to use a spoon to peel the ginger, okay? It's a so, life hack. So you just take the spoon instead of a peeler. You know when you have a, a peeler, you lose a lot of ginger and you don't know what's going on. The ginger becomes a different shape at the end. You just press it like this and you just get these tiny bits, like thinner than paper. And you just peel the ginger like so. Uh, if, if you don't mind, after today, I'm going to take that on as my, uh, as my own. I thought you was going to say, can we have a round of applause for how to build ginger from <laughs> But everyone's still asleep. We've got no, one no, way no. in the middle it's there. Okay. He's getting some free sushi when he comes to the restaurant. <laughs> so what have you got going in there, Mike? So what we got, we just got the ginger that we're peeling now. We've got about half an onion here. And then we've got two cloves of garlic that have just been peeled. And we're just cut some of this ginger. And we're going to mix that with the den miso. And guys, there's a, 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 a bottle of liquid on the seats. What does that relate to? Is this a... So the sauce that you got on your seats, this is the Anticucho sauce. So this is what's synonymous in, in Peru. That's with all the main grilled dishes. And what they use is they take the ajipanka, which is the red Peruvian chili, and that's dried and then blended into a paste. And then what we do, we add our own recipe to that. So that's blending up the ginger, the garlic, the onion, the miso paste. And this is one of our best-selling barbecue dishes at the restaurant. We're selling about the robata before. So that gets grilled on the robata. But what you have to do is marinate it at least overnight. If everyone wants to leave now and come back tomorrow, we'll just put this in here. So yeah, that would be mixed up and marinated now. This is the one we've done yesterday. So Mike's gonna sear it in the pan. You can do it like that at home, or you can have the grill on or a barbecue, you know? And the barbecue's got a great flavor because the marinade drips onto the coal, creates a puff of smoke which goes up, and flavors, everything goes back inside the chicken. Because there's sugars in the miso, they're gonna burn very quickly. So you don't need high heat for this. This is thigh. 
So in, in our testing, when we were tasting chicken, like what's the best feeling, the best taste? The thing that we liked about the thigh is that you get a really nice crispy skin. And generally on the grill, at the work, what we do is we, we have it on skin side for at least three quarters of the cooking stage. So by the time when we turn it over to the final side, it needs like an extra three, four minutes, a little bit of resting time. And that's what's great about this recipe is that when, when you take the thigh off, you cut the chicken and it's still nice and crispy. Yeah. So this is sea salt. So a lot of people make the mistake of when they cook with miso, is that it's salty, but you still have to season the food. So we're going to work on the beef attack now. Just got a little bit of sea salt there. What kind of beef is that? We're using fillet. So anytime we're doing tataki, we must always use the prime cut. One, because the center is obviously is softness and on the other side is the quality. So we're using Felix as a minimum amount of sinew and it also has a good marbling of fat on the inside which is obviously good for a taste. Do you guys have the pick of the best ingredients? We've, we are really very keen on picking out ingredients. We have amazing suppliers. I mean, we've been using some of our same suppliers for the last 17 years that we've been chef. This one gets seasoned with oil, salt and pepper. But the reason we haven't put the pepper in yet is we have a special pepper with us that we're going to tell you about. It's called Sancho Pepper. And there's a herb grown in Japan called Kiname, which is a leaf that grows about this small. The pepper form that grows on that herb plant is this. And, and Johnny, you said there that you, you've been a chef for 16, 17 years together. Yeah, we actually met at college together. We met when we were babies at college. Yeah. We attended by the university. And uh, yeah, we, you know, we were both in our last final years. Jordan finishes the MBQ level four. <laughs> and we, we stayed in contact for many, many years after. And it's only until, until now we've started to work together. So. Yeah. And where was your interest in this type of cuisine come from? Is it all from the technique? Is it from the ingredients you can use? Is it both the class? I started off with a love for Japanese food, eating in Japanese restaurants. I worked for a few years for Gordon Ramsay and it was like very, very fine dining. So I had to make a move where to go to work for Asian food there's still fine dining and it's not like a fast food thing. And that's when I got into the, the Japanese side of it. So we're just waiting for the pan to get really hot. Whenever we're doing tataki, the pan needs to be to the point where as soon as you put the beef in, it's gonna sear that skin. You see how the sugar's color in this pan? It doesn't need to be roasting hot pan to get a good color. And now we're gonna whack it in the oven. So as you can see, the pan's starting to smoke now. That's what we want for the tataki. So we're adding a little bit of oil. And all we're gonna do is just sear the beef. I haven't got a lot of oil in there, and what I'm looking to do is just caramelize the beef and then just soak up that oil, and you'll start to get this nice sort of golden brown, as you can see. Most other people, they do cold beef tataki, so they sear the beef, like uh, Mike is, or tuna, or salmon, whatever you want to make seared, and then they have a bowl of ice water. Season the water and put it in the ice water to instantly stop the middle from cooking. So you see, the outside is nicely seared, and then the inside is raw. There's a great deal of skill, but it's a very light touch. Uh, my mum had a, a great recipe for liver. Start cooking it on a Tuesday, ready for a Friday night. Uh, but this notion of just searing it in the pan and leaving it for a while. If your pan's not hot enough, what will happen is that the beef won't caramelize and it will end up cooking the beef. So what we have here, while the chicken's in, we have time to tell you about the garnish. Mike's going to make up the sauce here, which is made out of Aji Amarillo and yogurt. And these are Aji Amarillo's. You're lucky enough to see the real ones here today. So Mike will explain to you a bit about those. So the yogurt, we've got about 400 mils here. And we're gonna add about 10% of the Aji, Aji Amarillo paste. So as Jordan was saying, this is the pepper. So this is actually from Peru. And most of the products that we try and get from Peru, we, as, as we've been researching now, they, they either come here dried or they come frozen. So this in comparison to the red one, this one's a lot more fragrant and less spicy. So it has a very good peppery taste and it always has like a little citrusy finish to it. So it's really nice, really tasty. So that's the dried version. So what they'll do is they'll cut this in half, then they'll dry it and you'll get this version. So we're just going to add now the paste to the yogurt. Are you still discovering some new uh, ingredients and different ways to apply them? You must be developing ideas all the time. We're developing all the time. I mean, yeah. We have been working on opening a new restaurant as well. So we have a new site in Mayfair. But the new one's going to be called Bouillia Base, which is coastal cuisine. And we just recently got back from it, uh, we went to Venice, Milan, Barcelona, Athens, France, all over, only eating coastal food. I used to, I was slim like two weeks ago, seriously. I had so much fish there and we had to taste everything and we based the menu on the favorite dish we had in each region and the signature dish would be bouillabaisse. We spent months and months and months before going away perfecting the bouillabaisse recipe and uh, 
it's right. really at a top level. Well, that, that's a, it's an, exclusive, an exclusive for Grand Design Drive. Look forward to that. He explained it before about the Aggi Amarillo, which means yellow chili. This is the red one. So this goes on the plate first as the main sauce. People come, they can't give the plate back without mopping up the plate with their hand and spoons and everything. So we're really into our sauces, which you can say we're all talk, you're going to taste it today. Hopefully you, you agree. And, and they get to take the, is it a new sauce? The, the sauce we're going to put on top, which we we'll get to in a minute, is the bottle that you've all already put in your bags. <laughs> I can't see yeah. any. Yeah, no, they weren't to take home. So you don't need to be neat about it, you just put it on there. So that's the smoked haji panka, okay? And then we're going to use this one on the top. We've got the dip on the bottom, then we add the beef on top. And all I've done is just lightly seasoned it. Because obviously we've seasoned the outside, but also the inside needs a bit more love. Yeah. And we just place the beef on top. And yeah, then we're going to finish off with our passion fruit salsa. So here we have the passion fruit juice, which we've reduced to like almost like a syrup. And we've added English mustard to it. And then we just added the seeds back just at the end. It's a really nice experience. Like we have tasting menus that are on our menu there as a recommendation, and they're dishes that you know we've put together for you to have the best experience of coming. And they have about nine courses on it, eight to nine courses, so it gives you an idea. But you know, it's a bite and a taste, and something you can enjoy a lot further. So to finish the beef, we just got some coriander cress here, and it's been grown in its early stages. And Mike, you favour the chopsticks, and that's not just because you can, but that's because it's the authentic way of. Yeah, I like, like this. I also like to fill it up. He likes to show off. If you watch our Nick Boy videos, that. I didn't if you watch the Nick Boy videos on YouTube, Mike is showing off at any minute he gets. I mean, I am today, but he normally is. Such a mouth sometimes. <laughs> we grate him oranges in our yeah, last video. We just grate him. He's telling everyone dehydrate it and slice it and everything. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> That's our seared beef fillet to tacky. That's a brilliant looking dish. Calmly put together. Really nice craft, fantastic to be <laughs> If you don't clap, you don't get to eat, that's the rules. And we're doing up some tasters here. So this is the dish, you can jump into that one, but we also have some tasters here you can try as well. Yeah, so I'll just show you how to plate up this chicken. So that's the chicken that was marinated from yesterday. The miso, garlic, ginger. If you like the food, then you come back at 2 o'clock, we do another demo, you're going to eat it all again. <laughs> that's what I would have done. <laughs> so that goes on there. The yogurt's on the bottom. Take some of this salsa here which is the grated carrot, the daikon, which is a Japanese radish. And it's just sprinkled on top. That gives you that extra crunch, a salady feeling. We like to have a lot of fruit and vegetables, actually, in a lot of our food. You're not just coming and eating only, like, protein. A lot of Japanese restaurants you go to and you're just eating sashimi and meat. You end feeling like you haven't had, like, a good vegetable feeling. So most of our dishes do contain vegetables or fruit. Because Mike was in a showing off mood, he told me to put chives on today on the top. <laughs> I don't know where he got that idea from. Can you, but yeah, but can you do it with the chopsticks, please? Yeah. If you're going to really show it, I can do it. I can do it if you like, but there's enough on there now. Michael can do it. <laughs> Give me some chopsticks. <laughs> oh, it's challenge. There you go. challenge. Come on then. All right. Let's do this. He told me how to use chopsticks. So when you want to use chopsticks, you want to hold the top one like it's a pencil. There you go. So that's just a pencil, right? And then. The better you are at using chopsticks, like Mike, you pull it down and you hold your hand. The higher that you are, the more open you can open your chopsticks. So you hold it like a pencil, and this one just slides in underneath. And then you want to curve your fingers and on the second finger in to make it the point. Okay? And if you watch the Japanese people use chopsticks, how I was when I was growing up, the, the top one is always a bit longer than the bottom one. It's like a claw. So you're grabbing, you know, like this. Okay? So then you take it up. I'm going to throw it at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so you take it up like this, yeah? You can pick them up. That's it. But we have enough on the plate. Brilliant. So there we go. So those are the two dishes. And we need some feedback. Who, who wants to come and taste it? Okay, right. Well, before, before you get something, oh. yeah, exactly. Let's put your hands together for Michael and Jordan. Let's get to know Mr. Nick and our boys at the fantastic restaurant in Soho, Choto Mate. And uh, Thank you very much. these guys are with us all day. This is one opportunity to come and try some of the best cuisine available, not only in London, but at Grand Design Times. Thanks guys, cheers everyone.